Hello and welcome back to a series of brief video training tutorials on the virtual decorator software from Developer 3D. In this particular training video, we're going to break away from our more structured format and talk about some of the challenges that you might have as a new user when you're learning the software for the very first time. Now, it's important to remember the virtual decorator software is incredibly easy to learn to use. Most people are up and running and building a three-dimensional model in just around 10 minutes. But there are two or three challenges that new users sometimes experience. and We felt it would be good to make a brief video, show you what those challenges are, and of course show you how to avoid making them in your own model. So let's go ahead and open up a demonstration room. Let's go to our drop-down menu, our library of room templates here. Click on the 4 by 4 meter generic room. And I'm going to make us a, a small bathroom scene here. So the first thing we need to do is place some objects and materials into this scene that make it look like a bathroom. So I'll click on the floor, go to my materials library, and just scroll down here, and we'll put some mosaic tiles on the floor. And how I do that, I click on the floor, and click on the material that I wish to be applied to that surface. I click on the wall and click on the material. Click on the wall, click on the material. The reason I'm demonstrating this is occasionally new users find that the material that they want to be applied to a particular surface, somehow it ends up on some other surface. I wanted the tile to be on the floor, for example, and for some strange reason it ended up on the wall. The reason behind that is quite simply the software is doing what you tell it to do. If you click on the surface and then click on the material, the material goes on perfectly every time. But if you don't consciously go through the process of clicking where you want the material to be physically located and then selecting your material, sometimes the software will apply the material to the surface, not as you intended, but basically where you'd clicked. Okay, so let's put some objects into this scene. So I click where I want the object to be and click on the objects browser. Same thing, if I hadn't deliberately selected the floor in this scene, the shower may well have ended up on the wall. So let's use our move and rotate commands. We're just going to move this shower cubicle into position over here. And you can see the shower cubicle comes supplied with a, a default material. I want that to be the same as our mosaic tile. So I click on the material, I click on the surface rather, and then click on the material that I wish to be applied in my scene. I'm going to put a vanity unit into here. Click where I want the object to be, and then click on the object's browser and select the object. For the purposes of this demonstration, this vanity unit will be fine. So we're just going to move and to rotate this vanity unit to position. And again, very often putting these types of objects into a complex scene is a case of really moving and rotating, nudging the product until it's in exactly the position that we want it to be in. So you can see the default material for the vanity uh, doesn't exactly line up with our color scheme we're choosing here. So let's go to file and we'll go down to kitchen and bath materials. And I'm going to put a black top on here. And again, I'll demonstrate this concept of materials and incorrectly applied surfaces. If I had clicked on the hand basin rather than the vanity top and applied the material, you can see what happened. The software has basically applied this material to that surface. That's not what we want. Let's choose the undo command. Anytime you want to undo a command, you just click on the undo command. Now what we're going to do is put a, a set of taps into this scene. So I go to my objects browser, click on the area that I want the tap to be physically located or the spot the tap to be located and then choose the object that I wish to put into the scene. You can see this tap needs to be rotated and moved and we could do this insert rotate move um, command from any location. So let's click on the object and apply the new object that we want to apply to the top of that and rotate it into position. Okay, put one more object into a scene. Let's put a bath in here. So click on the floor where I want the object to be applied. Go to my library of products. And I'll choose this particular bath here. And this time, just as in the case of the shower, the default material for this bath, it doesn't line up with our scheme that we're building in our bathroom. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply new material to that surface. We click on the surface 
and then we select the material that we wish to apply to that surface. So now what I'm going to talk about is incorrectly positioned objects. This mostly happens when you're placing an object onto a vertical wall surface or somewhere else that's a little tricky in a scene. How do we do this? Really, it's the same process. All we need to do is click where we want the object to be inserted. So I want to click a shower head here, click where I want the object to be, and then click on the objects browser and insert the object. Go to taps and nozzles here and just select this one. Now I'm going to undo that command and deliberately make a mistake here for you. You can see I'm going to click on the glass of the shower screen rather than the wall, which is where I want the shower head located, and redo that command. And you can see the shower head's actually now on the glass. And a new user might say, why did that happen? I don't want the shower to be there. I want it to be on this wall over here. Well, it's exactly because you need to click exactly where you want the object to be and then apply the object to that physical location. So let's put the shower head there. Click a little further down on the wall and put some taps in. And of course we can move those anytime we want using our move and rotate commands. Okay, so they're the two principal challenges that people sometimes have when they're learning the software. They're very simple. Just remember, what you need to do is if you want to apply a material to a surface, you need to select the surface first and then choose the material from our materials library. And the second thing is the objects will be physically inserted into a scene wherever it is that you want that object to be. You need to click on the surface. In this case, I'm going to click on the wall because I want the object inserted against the wall and then go to my objects browser and I'll just go up here to my accessory section here and throw a mirror onto the wall here. So you can see if I had have selected the floor instead of the wall in this particular case, that mirror would have ended up sitting on the floor rather than the wall of my bathroom sink. That's all there is basically in terms of this um, tutorial for problem solving for new beginners. I do want to demonstrate one quick uh, little thing since we've got a, a bathroom scene here. It's probably ideal to do that. And that's to introduce the concept of opacity or transparency. And what I mean by opacity is the ability to see through an object. And you can see in the shower screen here, we have the capacity to get in here and even change the color of the glass on a shower screen. You see, I'm changing the color of the glass, but it's not making a lot of difference to the visual impact of our scene. So what we'll do is we'll go up to our color tool here, top left hand corner of the screen, use our mouse with the right hand mouse button held down. And you can see we can slide across this scale that takes us from fully opaque to fully transparent and everywhere in between. So if you ever wanna make a, a product semi-transparent to give it that illusion of being in a scene, uh, but not fully there, this is a great tool to use. For example, I'm going to go to my transparency tool or opacity tool. I'm gonna to soften down the bath object here. So we get a sense of the, the bath actually being there, but it's not an object that we're going to take as being solid and therefore being specific in our scene. Okay, that's all we've got for our video training tutorial today. Hope you've enjoyed the session and thank you for your time.